Okay. Welcome, everyone. We're really excited to have you at our first virtual college week. Um, I'm here to discuss transferring and how you can transfer to the universities and why you should come to Cochise first. Um, it's, uh, I did want to let you know that we are recording this, uh, this session. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and we'll address those at the end. Uh, also, it, at the end, we'll open it up for questions and unmute your mic so that you're welcome to, uh, to talk. If you'd like to show, share, uh, show your face on the screen, that's welcome too, but it's not necessary. Okay, here we go. Why should you go to Cochise College before heading to a university? One of the most important things that we feel that is the reason why is because you can improve your grades. Uh, if you didn't do well in high school or in, in previous uh, GED programs or whatever it is, it's a chance for you to improve your grades by coming to Cochise. Uh, we also offer the AJEX, it's the Arizona General Equivalency Courses. And what these are is it's a batch of courses that will transfer seamlessly to the university. And uh, you, can, you can do these, there's three different ones. I won't go into detail, but you can find more at uh, cochise.edu. And um, these, these are really interesting because as a group, you can go into the university instead of the requirements, the minimum requirements being a 3.0, you can go in with a 2.5 GPA. And that would be really helpful uh, if you are a struggling student. And uh, you can find more information about this at aztransfer.com. And you can also see how any CLEP tests or any other tests will, will transfer or even courses that we offer here at Cochise and see how they transfer to the in-state universities. The second reason why you should start at Cochise is because we offer smaller class sizes and we really care about our students. Uh, our ratio is 12 to 1 right now, and uh, we offer really cool transfer trips to the universities. We feel that that's really important because as a student who comes to Cochise, we want to make sure that when you transfer to the university, it's the right university. Uh, we do uh, lab tours when we go there. You're able to meet with anybody in particular if you needed to speak with a special department like the Veterans Department or TRIO or any other departments, we can set those uh, appointments up with you ahead of, ahead of time so that you will be able to talk to the people that you need. If you need to talk to somebody about scholarships, see an advisor, uh, just do a campus tour, we, we help you with all of those. Another reason why it's important and why we care about our students is we also offer industry tours at really cool companies. Uh, we've done some really fun things with the students and we just want to make sure that when you transfer that you know exactly what it is that you want to do so that you don't waste time and money uh, taking those more expensive classes at the university. Another reason why we show our students that we care is we help you with summer paid research opportunities across the country. These are sponsored by the National Science Foundation. They're sponsored by the Department of Energy and many other organizations. And one of the reasons why Cochise students are more likely to be able to uh, participate in these is because we're a Hispanic serving institution. You don't have to be Hispanic to be able to participate in these, but it's a great opportunity. And we've seen some fantastic uh, changes in students. And when they go to the university, they're more assured of what it is that they want to pursue. Another reason, why you should start at Cochise College is because you can save money. Uh, the Cochise tuition right now is $91 per credit hour. If you went to NAU, it's uh, the tuition for a year is $10,650. If you went to ASU, it's 10,710 years. Uh, and this is not counting your cost of living. This is just tuition. If you go to U of A, it's $12,600. And at Cochise at um, $91, it's only, and if you did 12 credits, it's only $1,092 a semester. So, and that would be like less than $3,000 for the entire year. So you should look at coming to Cochise. And, and if you are only coming for just to take some of those, those classes like your English or your math classes, uh, those would be great opportunities for you to, 
take them with, without spending a whole lot of money. Uh, and once again, you will know exactly how they transfer. If you have any questions about transferring to the university or any of these things, please contact me. My name is Celia Jenkins. I'm the student recruitment manager here at Cochise College. And my email is jenkinsc, J-E-N-K-I-N-S-C at cochise.edu. That's J-E-N-K-I-N-S-C at cochise.edu. I appreciate you attending this. And now I'd like to turn you over to somebody who's really key as far as transferring goes. And that's Jen Wants, and she's gonna talk about Phi Theta Kappa. Take it away, Jen. I just wanna take a couple minutes to talk about uh, the Honor Society for two-year colleges. And we have two chapters at Cochise College, one on our Douglas campus and one on the Sierra Vista campus. And one of the most important things about Phi Theta Kappa for students is money. It's all about the scholarships. So when you go as a transfer student to any of the three state institutions, NEU, ASU, or GSU, you're gonna get a transfer scholarship if you have a high enough GPA. But if you have a 3.5 or higher, you're gonna get almost double that money if you're also a PTK member. So I really encourage you to join. Um, we also have professional development, leadership experience, research projects that we do every year. And we do community service with the Salvation Army and some other organizations in town. So really take advantage, especially of PTK, but also of any of our clubs and organizations on campus. Thank you, Jen. Uh, there's also Brian Homerickhausen. He is part of our student success and he's also a co-sponsor with uh, Jen as far as the advisor for the Phi Theta Kappa's organization. And his, uh, his information will be available at the end also. I would spell it, but homework housing is a tough one to spell. So next we have arts and humanities. And for arts and humanities, we are very fortunate to have Virginia Thompson and Ashley Dalkey. So you ladies, take it away. Thank you. Hi, my name is Virginia Thompson and I am a ceramics and sculpture instructor and also the department chair for fine arts and humanities at Cochise College. Hi, and I'm Ash Dalkey. I'm the 2D instructor on the Douglas campus. The first thing that we're gonna walk through today are the core courses that you'll be expected to take as the fine arts associates of arts major. And you'll start with the design fundamentals class, which will give you the building blocks to not only talk about art, but create art. Um, and then you'll move on to drawing one, which you will learn how to translate ideas onto a two-dimensional surface. And you'll also learn how to take things from reality and draw it onto <laughs> your drawing surface as well. After that, you will take 3D design, which you'll take those same ideas learned in design fundamentals and drawing one, and consider how you can do those same things in three dimensions. On top of the studio classes, you'll also have two art history classes that will take you from prehistoric to the Gothic era, and then also from the Renaissance to the 20th century. All of our classes transfer and our core classes transfer direct, so they're all sun accredited for the four-year schools in Arizona. And they're also accepted at many schools across the US, so you can talk to your advisor if you know where you'd like to transfer to. Um, art goes beyond just specific art careers into soft skills and career opportunities that are right now being valued even more than ever by prospective employers across all career fields. Um, some of these skills are creativity, problem solving, critical thinking, time and material management, aesthetic skills, technical skills, collaboration, and communication. Um, on the right, you can see just some of the opportunities for careers with an associate or a bachelor's of arts degree, um, not just as an artist, but as a graphic or web designer, advertising, art therapy, photography, teaching, or running a small business. These are some examples of 3D work from the Sierra Vista campus. You can see examples of ceramics work, um, also of work from the 3D design and sculpture class. And the small picture at the top shows a ceramic piece next to a piece made in one of our state-of-the-art 3D printers to make a replica of it digitally. And here are a few examples from the 2D courses. We have a still life painting and a landscape painting from a painting one course on the Sierra Vista campus. 
And then the two black and white images on the bottom right hand of the screen are from that design fundamentals class. So working with line and abstraction and also with value to create form. And here you can see some photos of students working in our facilities on the Sierra Vista campus. Both the Sierra Vista and the Douglas campus offer all of the core classes that you will need um, and also many electives. And we have a really well-stocked equipment and facilities on both campuses. In the bottom right corner, you students making use of our um, Google Daydream virtual reality headsets in a ceramics class. And here are a few images from the Douglas campus. On the right-hand side, you have students working in the drawing and painting classroom. Um, and then on the left-hand side, a few students working within the ceramic studios. And we also have an image on the bottom of some of those kilns that will fire those ceramic objects. Um, we are using protective measures for COVID mode. So we are currently in studio classes and will continue into the spring. Um, utilizing all CDC guidelines, including social distancing, face covering, sanitation, and a hybrid element to our classes. And then electives. So this is for uh, both non-art majors and majors. Depending on the degree path that you choose, you will either have regular electives or a specific art elective that you'll have to take. In bold, I have all the classes that do not have a prerequisite. So we completely understand if you come in with no prior art experience. Um, you, can all, you can take classes that are more hands-on, um, studio-based classes, which are on the left side of the screen, or you can take a more traditional based class like appreciation of the visual arts or those two art history courses I mentioned earlier. And if you wanna stay active on campus, um, you can also be a part of art club. Um, Art Club does a lot on, um, on both campuses and within the arts community um, in Sierra Vista and Douglas. Thank you. Thank you. We hope to all see you all in class. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Uh, if you're interested in taking a tour of the facilities, you're welcome to, uh, we can either do it via Zoom so that you can actually, we'll take you around and you can contact uh, the, talk to the faculty through uh, a Zoom session, or you can sign up for a tour, a campus tour. Uh, we have a few uh, guidelines before you can come. And of course we will be practicing the CDC guidelines. Uh, next on our list is, um, we have digital media arts and Janae Sanchez will be presenting on that. Take it away, Janae. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Janae Sanchez and I am a, an instructor in the digital media arts program. And we have recently um, converted this program and uh, we changed the name so that it's now called Digital Media Arts. Previously, it was called Media Production Arts. And here are a few slides. Um, I'll show you some, some student examples, um, but first uh, I'll give you a look at some of the core courses that we offer in, in our program. So with semester one, you'll definitely begin um, by learning the basics, right, with creating digital art. Um, and we use Adobe products. And so you'll start with digital imaging where you'll get a taste of several Adobe applications. Um, then in semester two and three, you have several options, that whether you wanna do computer animation or video projection, where you will continue to learn more about Adobe products using um, Premiere and also Adobe Animate and Character Animator. Uh, with both of the courses with animation and video production, you get a taste of audio editing and audio recording. And so you'll use an application called Adobe Audition. Um, then finally, um, the last few semesters, right, you have a choice of either taking graphic design uh, or digital photography, where uh, you really get into image making in different formats, um, not only uh, through, you know, illustration, but also converting drawings into um, digital formats and, and of course, digital video. 
Uh, so here are some, a few examples. This is a, a piece by a student um, who is in my advanced digital photography class. This photograph was taken last week and it's a beautiful, you know, a starscape of um, the Sierra Vista area. In photography, you not only learn about the basics of using your camera, we use digital, you can, you have an option of using your cell phone in the first few weeks of the semester, um, but I really encourage students to either borrow or if they have um, the funds to purchase their own DSLR camera so that you can begin to understand the fundamentals of shooting in manual mode, shooting as if you were a professional photographer. And so we go through um, really the fundamentals of camera usage. And then we get into Photoshop where you can um, manipulate and create digital collages. And so here's an example of a project where we create a double exposure um, through a Photoshop process. A few more examples. So it's really about experimentation and using uh, multiple mediums, you know, not only um, digital mediums, but how can you combine painting, right, with um, digital photography. And so here's a, a nice example of that. Um, in design, there are many projects that allow students to explore combining and, you know, programs like Photoshop and Illustrator and even um, animate. Some students like to animate their illustrations. And so this is a great course um, to take if you are interested in animation because you really get to uh, learn about the foundations of um, creating uh, vector drawings. And then finally, I have a few examples of what we do in our digital video production class. And these are some posters of uh, public events that we organize a class. In all of my classes um, from animation through video, we try to find a way to affect uh, a positive change or to uplift a uh, community. So we created a documentary that allowed us to learn more about this building you see here in Douglas, Arizona, which is the Grand Theater. And so we documented oral histories from elders in our community. And then we have we had a few public events. So this happened um, through two semesters. And so we, we not only shoot in, in, in our classroom, but we go out into the community and um, you know, find the stories that are that matter and the stories that could, that the students are interested in sharing. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will put a link to our uh, YouTube channel in, in the chat and I hope to um, get to know some of you next year. Thank you. Thank you, Janae. Um, I really did like that picture of Frankenstein. I've never seen that one before. So that was pretty cool and appropriate for this time of year. We do have Mary Coyle back online with us and she's going to tell us a little bit more about the honors program. Go ahead, Mary, thank you. Okay, um, I'm trying to share my screen but the other one has to be taken down first. So I can't share my Okay, maybe now I can. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so my name is Mary Coyle, and I am the chair of the Honors Program. And the Honors Program here at Cochise College is based on creative scholarship and leadership. Students are given academic opportunities to challenge themselves outside of the traditional curriculum uh, in their classes. One of the ways to get to know the honors program well is to take the honors 101 class. It's free, it's offered every semester, it's one credit online, and when you sign up, it's automatic tuition, with, there's no prereqs. So it's open to all students at, at any level. We offer it during the fall and spring, 16 weeks and the second eight week semester. So you can start a semester and then take the class in the second eight weeks. It's an introduction to honors program, but it's also an introduction to study skills and other things that you'll need um, at the college in general. 
Thank you, Mary. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, that's, a, that's great information for students. Uh, the next program we'd like to feature is Administration of Justice. And to tell you a little bit more about that, we have Don Rayleigh and Jeremy Wagner. Go away. Go ahead, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Celia. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jeremy Wagner. I, along with Don Rayleigh, we're the uh, instructors for Administration of Justice here. Um, you know, there's a lot of good reasons to, uh, to get into this program. You know, uh, when, when Don and I first got into uh, law enforcement way too long ago, I won't admit how long ago that was, so don't ask. Um, you, didn't, you didn't have to go to college to get in, okay? It wasn't expected that you would go to college. You just went right in out of high school. And, and that's really changed. More, more and more agencies, especially federal agencies, are looking for you to have a, a degree when you come in. And more of them are looking for a four-year degree, okay? Most federal agencies will require a four-year degree. Um, when I joined the Border Patrol, I actually got more money for having my four-year degree already. So, and that's the whole reason we're doing this, right? To go to college, to get a good job, to make more money. So having that degree is not only going to help you get that job, it's going to help you make more money in that job, all right? And one of the big reasons agencies are asking for this is because when you go into an academy or a training program in criminal justice, uh, you're going to get a ton of information thrown at you in a hurry. It's going to be overwhelming at times. And agencies want you to have a base of constitutional law, understanding the Fourth Amendment, what you can and can't do when you're out working. Because if you don't have that base and you don't quite catch it when you're at the academy, you're still responsible for it if you screw up. So they want you to have a better base and a better understanding of, of the law that allows you to do your job. And you're gonna get that in this program. Okay, we cover criminal investigations, constitutional law, uh, criminology. We cover the whole spectrum. So you have a better idea of what to expect not only when you get to the job, but when you get into that specific training program. And lastly, and this is my favorite thing, is that Don and I were both in law enforcement for a long time. Uh, if I did my math right, we have a combined about 50 years of experience in law enforcement before we started teaching. So when we're talking about something, we're not just reading it out of a book and giving it right back to you, all right? It's things that we've experienced. We actually know how this works in the real world. So we can give you the concepts and go, this is how that concept looks when you get out there. When you're doing the job, this is what the concept means to you. And I really enjoy that we can give that experience to the next generation of, of students that are coming up. And I'll stop there and I'll let Don jump in. I don't want to monopolize it. So thank you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Get myself unmuted here and I, everything but Zoom in our program, right? <laughs> no, I appreciate you uh, letting me kick in there. Uh, there's other things that we think about when we think about the, the things that college does to contribute to our lifestyle. And the administration of justice program is very strong in the sense that it gives you, as you go away from here, a skill base that's going to take you through, uh, as we've learned in society lately, good times and bad times. Uh, no matter how bad things are in the economy, no matter how bad things are in the community, the criminal justice system has to function and the players who work within the criminal justice system have to be there. So uh, you come away from this making yourself very valuable to society in a lot of ways, both personally fulfilling and the things that you do that, uh, that make you feel good about going to work every day, but also knowing that uh, you're going to be able to support yourself and your family through good times and bad times. And uh, that's kind of the solid basis we, we hope to put behind us in all of our career efforts, I think. So uh, that, that's pretty much what I have. So uh, we'll uh, kick it back over to, uh, to the next program down the line. Thanks, guys. All right, so I think that's where I come in. And I am Kristen Juarez. I teach psychology. And I'm here to talk about the social and behavioral sciences degree plan. So we do have this amazing program. It's not like the others where it's one thing that I can just talk about my field. I would love to do that, but I can't. So <laughs> we cover five separate fields. We have anthropology, history, political science, psychology, and sociology. And the beauty of this degree is that it sets you up to transfer well to any college in the United States. We've designed it specifically to make it highly transferable. And really, if you want to think about why you should get a degree in a social and behavioral science, it makes sense because employers are looking for employees who will come to them already having a skill set, but they also want them to have the ability to uh, 
to do the soft skills that a lot of uh, employees are currently lacking. And these programs absolutely set you up for that. So you get a good understanding of people, the historical context of people, the ideas and ideology that shape people and how people work, not just individually, but also in a group. So if you look at the idea of anthropology, history, political science, psychology, and sociology, they're really all about people, how they work together or not, <laughs> and some of the beauty of us and how we move and change throughout time and space and place and people. So if you have any questions about the social and behavioral sciences degree, I've got lots of information. I would love to answer them and go ahead and let me know at the end of this. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that information. I know that that also some of your classes also count for intensive writing classes, which are part of some other degrees, too. So it's really good to have that information. Uh, next on our agenda is math everyone's favorite subject and I am going to share with you that Miss Angela Garcia has got a great sense of humor and it's worth it to take her class just to see her cartoon characters. Take it away Angela. Hi everyone, so um, I am very fortunate to teach math and the reason I'm fortunate is because you all have to take it. I don't care what degree you're getting, you have to take it. So, um, but something you might not know is that which math class you take actually varies depending on what your degree is that you're going for. So if you're going through a STEM pathway, you're gonna eventually need to take calculus. So that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics degrees. So we have one path that'll lead you there. And then we have our non-STEM pathway. So if you're doing psychology or sociology or art, or um, I believe administration of justice also, um, they take our um, math 142, which is college mathematics. And it's kind of a survey course where we try to cover things that are a little more real world than algebra typically is. So it'll cover probability and statistics and some things like that. Um, we are also now offering a co-requisite program. So if you come into the college and maybe you're not quite ready to take that first college level math class, you can sign up for it and take a two credit supplementary course so that you can take your college level math and get it done in that first semester, okay? Um, and then my favorite part, you can get a degree in mathematics. You can get an associates of science in mathematics, which of course will lead you to a bachelor's and a master's and a doctorate in mathematics. No, you don't have to do all that. So the associates of mathematics can actually go to computer science degrees. It can go to physics degrees. It can go towards engineering degrees. There's a lot of degrees out there that require those upper level math classes and those will still help you out. And um, by the way, I'm not the only math teacher that likes to put memes and silly comics in. So we all have terrible senses of humor that are ridiculous and hopefully some of you get it some of the time, but we like teaching math. We're kind of crazy that way. And we really enjoy having you in class and 24 classmates instead of 400, way better. So come take it with us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to answer. We'll have those uh, those contact numbers and emails down later in the, the, the meeting. And if you are interested in sending us a comment or a question, please go ahead and put those in the chat. We'll be glad to address those in just a few minutes. Uh, next on our agenda is science. So if you really are a hands-on person, we have some great cool labs here at the uh, Cochise College and a lot of uh, resources that are pretty amazing. So Carrie, would you like to take this one and share a little information with our audience? I have um, a PowerPoint for you. Let's see if I can get it. <laughs> can you <we> see? <laughs> I think so, thank you. Um, so uh, with our uh, science department, um, it encompasses, of course, a lot of areas of science. Um, 
maybe I should move myself. I'm not too sure if you can see this. Oh, no, 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 go back. Look at me. I already look like I don't know how to use the, the, the Zoom. <laughs> okay, um, so we have astronomy, we have uh, biology, chemistry, geology, um, and physics. And um, I mean, all of these will uh, transfer to the universities. Um, and then also it will transfer to our nursing department as well. Um, and what you can do with science, I mean, not only do you have to have a lab science a part of your degree, um, especially if you have your AS degree, but you can be any scientist if you like. <laughs> so I have this little thing here down for you uh, just to show uh, what things that you could do. Um, so you could be a researcher, um, you could be a teacher like us. <laughs> um, you can also go into areas of uh, politics. Um, you can work for business and, and be a scientist that way. Um, you could be a doctor, you could be a nurse. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do with science and not, I mean, it's cool too, to understand how the world works. I, I think that's the most fun part of science. Like you can tell people like, I know why the sky is blue. Like maybe not many people know that. So, um, so yeah, there's tons of different areas of studies that, that you can take for science. Um, and like I said, with the uh, nursing department, um, this is actually one of my students. Um, this was off the internet, so <laughs> um, it's, it's okay to put on there, but um, we have a great transition with our nursing department. Um, you take uh, all of your prereqs and then you can smoothly transfer um, into the nursing department. And of course you do have to take the HESI um, and exams like that. So it's not like you can just walk right in and say, I want to be a nurse. <laughs> um, and then another really cool thing that we have um, is our undergraduate research program. So this started about eight years ago. Um, and it also, we have a club, but um, you can uh, put it in some of your classes, like Dr. Merkley has that, even um, uh, Mr. Frankie Manuel. Um, and you really get this firsthand um, research experience. And I always tell students, uh, the more contacts that you get, uh, it looks better on your CV or your resume. Um, you can also use it for your honors credit too. So you get that nice little H on your, on your transcript. And another fun thing is not only just the, the research itself, but we get to share our research projects um, all across the country. So um, just uh, last year we went to uh, California and Washington DC uh, to share our research project. So this is a Bobcat, um, one of Dr. Merkley's um, research experiences. And we also can go to Mexico. Um, I work with bacteria. So, um, so there's a bunch of uh, different research projects that you can do. Um, and that is pretty much uh, what I have for the sciences. I mean, of course, I have, there's tons I could talk about that I want to share with everyone else. Uh, but if you have more questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you, Carrie. And if anyone, once again, is interested in taking a tour, you can sign up on our website uh, through cochise.edu and slash tours. Uh, we can do those in person, but we must follow COVID rules. Uh, and the requirements will be listed on our website. Um, so next on our agenda is another one of our favorite instructors. It's Dan Gilmet, and he's going to talk a little about a little bit about computer information systems. Take it away, Dan. Good evening, everybody. As Celia said, I'm Dan Gilmet. I'm the CIS department chair, and uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the three major programs that we have that go over to uh, UVA Sierra Vista, and that's computer science, cybersecurity, and network uh, technology. So if you're interested in programming, you would like to learn about Java and C and even Assembler, yes, we still do it, we still program in Assembler, uh, then our computer science degree might be for you because it actually will transfer over to U of A into their computer science Bachelor of Science. An interesting note, uh, as a computer scientist, you can also be a software developer, and those jobs nationwide are set to grow by over 22% through over the next decade. So it's a, some, a place, something that you can bring your skills anywhere to get a job. I'm going to talk about network technology next. So if you're interested in troubleshooting, you want to learn about Microsoft Active Directory, because 
All the businesses use Active Directory nowadays. Uh, you want to go into our network technology degree. Now, system administration jobs are set are set to grow uh, five, ten percent over the next decade or so, and this transfers over to the U of A Applied Computing Bachelor's of Applied Science with the network operations emphasis. Uh, of course, my favorite is the cybersecurity program. Um, it transfers over to U of A's uh, very well thought of cyber operations bachelors, okay? Uh, computer forensics, network defense, operating system security. If you wanna find out any, any of that information, that's it. Now, some of the sites I've looked at say the cybersecurity related jobs are gonna grow by over 31% over the next decade. I'm gonna tell you that's probably low. Okay, they have a lot of openings and these skills will transfer geographically anywhere you go. Okay, one interesting thing is, of course, we can't use it this semester, but we have a, a brand new cyber center in the downtown center uh, with all sorts of bells and whistles and everything. So if you are interested in doing this, uh, you probably ought to talk to us CIS faculty because we want to make sure you get into the right course sequences. Some of our courses are only offered once a year right now. So if you miss a prerequisite, well, you know, we don't want to have that happen, okay? And if you have any qu questions, uh, contact me or I'll be hanging around towards the end if somebody has any questions. Celia, that's it. Thank you, Dan. As you can see, all of these programs that Cochise offers do transfer to universities and uh, just in-state and out-of-state, not just, uh, just locally, they'll go anywhere. So I do want to share the one more with you. It's business administration, and we're very fortunate to have Suzanne Trimbath be able to tell you a little bit about that program. Go ahead, Suzanne. Hi. When I first saw the lineup of speakers uh, today, I was a little concerned that business administration, that the business degree was at the bottom. But then I realized that um, every job that they've talked about so far is in a business. If you are in nursing, you work for a business. If you're in art, you work for a business. If you're in computers, you work for a business. And so all of the classes that we offer, even if you don't take a business degree, still offers you a lot of advantages in terms of your career uh, potential. The classes that we have in accounting, statistics, and economics transfer to the Arizona universities under the uh, shared unique numbering system, which means that they transfer as accounting, statistics, and economics. The economics classes that we have in our degree program are in fact uh, satisfy the intensive writing requirements uh, that you use, which is one of the general requirements you have to fulfill to get your degree. Um, our core subject matter is more than one half of all the um, uh, credits that you need to get your degree. So 36, we have 36 uh, credits in our degree program, the Business Administration Associated Business degree that are in fact um, in the core program and you need 64 to graduate. So more than half of what you're gonna take in that is gonna be uh, business. Of course, math, not to, I mean, Angela is important. So math is also in there too. Everybody takes math, everybody takes English, but in the uh, business program, you get to take quite a few that are relevant, very relevant to the degree. It is fully transferable to management marketing or a general business program at any of the Arizona universities. Um, it also trains you for direct employment. So uh, I know everyone who's coming tonight is interested in transfers, but if for any reason you end up not transferring, it still trains you with the skills that businesses require, those soft skills, right? The people skills, the how, how to get along with other people, how to write a business memo. It trains you for immediate employment in any business. Uh, and then finally, if you're uh, undecided about transferring to university, you could start with one of our certificate programs, which Margarita Fate will be talking about tomorrow night at the virtual campus on the, the, um, uh, the workforce development programs. You can start with that and all of those credits can be applied to a degree. So there are many ways to get into this. Uh, business Administration Associated Business Degree Program at Cochise College. Um, if you're interested in it, please, I'm gonna stick around too at the end here to answer questions and feel free to contact us at any time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, this concludes the actual presentation part of our program. I would like to make sure that everyone knows that they're invited tomorrow night for the workforce development where we'll talk a little bit more about certificates 
and direct to employment programs. Uh, if you have questions, you're welcome to go ahead and put them in the chat or you're welcome to um, unmute. Can, we, can they unmute themselves, Robin? Yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask a question directly. Um, we'll take a few minutes and see if anyone has any questions. Um, I had a question about like, so I don't know much about college at all. That's why I'm trying to attend these to understand a little more. And so when you say transfer from like college to a university, is there a difference between the two? Like you have to take college first in order to go to university or like you have to go to a university in order to get like a degree and you can't get a degree at the college. I don't know, I'm just a little confused. Hey Maya, thank you for the question. Um, no, you, you don't have to go directly from, uh, you don't have to go directly to Cochise before going to university. We're just trying to show you that it is an option and it's a way to save money. As I mentioned, I don't, I'm not sure if you were here in the very beginning, but it was a way to improve your grades. We have smaller class sizes. Uh, it's a lot less expensive to come to Cochise first. And you can see, you can make sure that any classes that you take, if you're planning on going to a university, that's four years, we're only two years here at Cochise, then you would want to make sure that your programs would seamlessly transfer to the university. Um, does that answer your question or do you have so another question? So Maya, I just wanted to like, let you know that Cochise College is a community college. So there is a difference between a two-year community college and a university. So I know sometimes that's confusing when you hear Cochise College, you may think it's just like any other university that, that might be a state university that is usually a four to five-year program. So that's where some of that confusion may come in. So um, that's the difference between starting at Cochise and then moving on to university. So Cochise College does offer programs that are just a two-year degree, so you can go straight into a work program or we do offer, um, as was talked about today in this session, a lot of programs that can transfer into a university. So you do your first two years here and then you do years three and four at a state university. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? So Robin, you're going to put a link for this information uh, somewhere for everyone to have access to, or how are you going to, to do that? Yes, I've put that in the chat. So it has some of the um, information about what everybody shared tonight, as well as the contact information for our presenters. And this recording was, or this presentation was recorded. So we will be providing that on our website, as well as our YouTube channel. So free to share that with your friends once that gets posted. It'll probably be posted by Monday of next week. We're, we're trying to get all four sessions to be done and posted so that those are available for next week. Thank you, Robin. Uh, if you haven't tuned into our YouTube channel, you should. It's really cool. We've got some great videos. One of my favorites is the one on tutoring. Uh, so if you get a chance, make sure you go check us out on YouTube. Are there any other questions? Oh, I did have one last question. I was wondering, so they were talking about like art and photography and like filmmaking. I was wondering if that's like a realistic career or if it's like sustainable because I've been interested in that stuff since I was younger, but I don't know how realistic it is to have it as a career. Ashley or Virginia, would you like to answer that one? Well, Janae, do you want to take that over for DMA? Um, Sure. Yeah. Hi, Maya. Um, I would say, you know, I'm so glad that um, Susan talked about how all of the different programs somehow tie back to business. And I really want to stress that um, several of my students have not only received internships, um, but also jobs with businesses and also institutions like, like government institutions. If you think about like every entity now is on social media. And so content creation is just, there's a, it's an enormous field. And so I would say it is a sustainable career, um, whether you go into the marketing direction or of course, filmmaking, like actually 
you know, doing productions. So I would love to continue the conversation if you want to talk more. Okay, thank you. No. And you have a YouTube channel too, right, Janae? Yes, we have a few um, of the past, I think four semesters, our group projects are on YouTube and it's the, the second link that I posted on the chat. And I've also added that to that document that they'll have access to too, so. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? If not, you're always welcome to contact me at Jenkins J E N K I N S C at cochise.edu to answer any other questions or help you set up a tour. We would love to have you, uh, if you're not an already a student, we'd love to have you as a student. And we look forward to hopefully seeing everyone on campus maybe next semester. Uh, thank everyone for presenting. And um, is there anything else you can think of that I need to add, Robin? Okay, well, thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.